Wow, that was cool. I could hear all of you saying the pledge. That was wonderful. <laughs> um, the Time for the roll call. Mrs. Mayor, if you would do the roll call, please. Yes, I'm barely here, but I will do it. <laughs> um, I need to shake Kaczynski. She is excused. And I am here. Lisa? Here. Tim? Here. Gary? Here. Tom? He is excused. Jeff? Here. And Cheryl? Here. So with five of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Um, board norms and reflection. We had a board retreat last Monday and we um, produced a list of um, norms or operating principles, but until we have approved those, we'll just keep a reminder on our agenda um, that we're moving forward with that. That would be on our agenda. The new um, operating criteria will be on our agenda for the next weeks or the next meeting that we have. So approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been po posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, that I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. There is a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item <coughs> at this time? We ask that a five minute time period per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Anyone that isn't here for DECA or the introduction of new teachers? <laughs> Seeing none, then we will move on to recognition <coughs> and, and um, thank yous. And Dr. Mueller, we will begin with you with the introduction of new staff. <coughs> yeah, this thank evening. You. <laughs> I am very excited and honored to welcome our new staff. Um, this is staff that has been with us even starting in September of this last year. Um, in that, and what we would like to do is ask them to come forward, and we're going to introduce them, or they're going to introduce themselves and their position and what they do. And we are just very happy to have them join us um, in our home and school district. So if you could please come forward. Yes, Mr. Clark, I think he's getting up to help with that and he will line you up along the side. And <laughs> Thank you, Jay. I'll come. Please come forward. Passed. Yeah, let's just make a big order. Yep, that's fine. The trick of this is once you've identified yourself, then pass the microphone on and stay until the end of that, and then we, um, our meeting goes long, so you're not expected to stay um, beyond that. But <laughs> I'm Cody Myers. I work in the middle school with the 7th and 8th grade English language learners, and I'm coming to you from Marshfield, Wisconsin. Wendy Grace, third grade at Sand Lake Elementary. I'm coming back to the district after three years in Michigan. I am Rebecca Adnes. I'm an educational interpreter technician at Evergreen Elementary School. Um, I am the language and cultural conduit for a deaf and hard of hearing student there, and I am coming from CESA 4. My name is Dawn Oliver, and I'm teaching eighth grade inclusion at the middle school, and I come from teaching both in Washington State and in Arizona. I'm Julie Holman, and I'm the Administrator of Business Services. Um, I am from La Crosse, but I spent the last eight and a half years at La Crescent School District. Wade Wilson, I'm a Special Education Educational Assistant out at the Prairie, and um, I came from the lunchroom. <laughs> <laughs> I am Marissa Fraser. I um, teach eighth grade math at the middle school. I'm a Holman alumni, and I taught in Poinette last year. I'm Jody Ammerman. I teach early childhood special ed, and I am coming from Alternative Ed in La Crosse. I'm Ann Wilson. I teach 4K at Viking, and I'm coming from teaching in Black River Falls. And I student taught here eight years ago, so I'm so excited to be teaching here now. I'm Sarah Sadko. I teach kindergarten at Prairie View, and I'm coming from Black River. I am Carrie Huth, and I'm the Instructional Services Coordinator. I'm coming from CESA, and prior to that, West Salem, and I'm also a home and grad of over 20 years ago now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm Lelisha Olson, and I am the Pupil Services Coordinator. And I live in Alaska, but I'm coming from La Crescent School District, and also student taught here at the high school 13 years ago. So I'm glad to be back. My name is Kathleen Gallagher. I teach ESL at Sand Lake, and I also work with the 4K ESL students at Prairie View. Um, last year, I was actually here as a limited term, working strictly with 4K English language learners, and I'm happy to be back as well. I'm Greg Krieger, uh, director of IT. Uh, I come from Rhinelander. I'm Vinny Valdez. I am a school bus driver, originally from Chicago, live in Trempolo. I'm um, after 30 years in the restaurant business, and I'm a Chicago Bears fan. <laughs> we're we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> My husband's a Cubs and Bears fan, so I can relate to that. But welcome on behalf of the board. I know we've had that opportunity to welcome you before, but you know the, our board meetings are broadcast to thousands of people in the, the school <laughs> district, so it's an opportunity for you to come before the board um, and have that introduction. And we appreciate the time that you're putting in and getting acclimated to the district. We know that it was very rigorous um, application process to get hired here, so congratulations. And please know that we value um, everything that you do <clears throat> and that you matter. <laughs> so, so thank you so much. Um, yes, and I think a picture. So if you'd kind of scrunch together and it's kind of fun because I recognize some of the alumni. I judged one for sure and, um, as a gymnast. So is, do you want to go? Cheryl, is Miss Ammerman a daughter of our other teacher? Ammerman? No. No. Okay. And I would note that the high school teachers are at conferences this evening. If they do come over, we will take a mo moment to introduce them as well, um, if you would allow that during the, um, the agenda, during the meeting. But thank you very much for coming this evening. <clears throat> so then, the, um, another exciting thing that happens this time of year is recognition of the pork feed. I know that's a very successful event, and um, I'm not sure who to turn this to. Oh, well, there you go. Julie. You haven't seen enough of me present lately in the last <laughs> couple of months, so I'll do it. How about? All right, so tonight we're just going to talk a little bit and share some pictures about the annual pork feed event. Um, as a reminder, this event is organized um, by the leadership team, supervisors, and administration. And um, a big thank you goes out to Shirley Rozak, uh, Jay's assistant, for all the hard work and hours she puts in to organize the event and the um, advertising and organize the, the many volunteers it takes to put on this event each year. So uh, we're going to begin just by reviewing the sponsors for the event. We have several local uh, financial institutions that support the event every year. Um, Ultra Federal Credit Union, Associated Bank, Firefighters Credit Union, River Bank, Seven Bridges Bank, and um, Community Credit Union is now called Verve, a credit union. So that's the last one on the list here. They continue to support us. Um, as supporters of the event, they get to put up banners around the football field and advertise their services. Um, so each year, uh, or Shirley coordinates the, the banner presentation. And um, this event is typically held on a homecoming weekend, the home football game. Uh, it was again this year, and the competing team was the Lacrosse Central um, football team. And then we just have a bunch of pictures that are put together by various um, people sharing their uh, photography, photography that evening. Um, so we have volunteers and staff working in the tents to serve people. Um, some pictures of families um, enjoying the outside seating. It was a beautiful evening for a homecoming football game. Um, we have one picture of a dog that was in the parade that day, so that was kind of fun. 
um, as well as more pictures of volunteers and um, children enjoying the meal. And again, the high school marching band uh, provided entertainment for those that came early um, to, avoid, uh, to enjoy the meal. More pictures of the um, fans. Um, one of the things that they do during this time is they have bleacher vendors, so they go out and um, try to sell more pork in, within the bleachers, so that's kind of fun. So we had a few different people volunteer to do that job. Additional contributing businesses include American Legion, Blue Northern Distribution, Festival Foods, Panagold, and Reinhardt, so we thank them for their contributions as well. Um, a big thank you again out to leadership team, um, supervisors and administrators that volunteer for the event and work through the event and also those that also volunteer their time um, outside of their responsibilities. This is a comparison of the um, proceeds this year um, over last year's pork feed. Uh, we had very, very similar proceeds. The difference is the increased cost of food. We did not increase the price of the meal, um, but the increased cost of food has created a slight decrease over last year's um, proceeds. So still a very good, successful event. The 14-year total for this event is over $70,000. So it's really nice. Um, one of the things I noticed as being my first pork feed in Holman is the great support of the Friday night football and the local community effort um, just to come out and watch the parade and watch the football game and support this event. So that was pretty neat. So we're going to go through and just present some checks. I'll, I'll show you on the screen. And then um, if there's representatives of the uh, recipients of the donations, um, I'll ask them to come up. Um, I think we need to take a picture if that's <laughs> oh, got to take a picture um, so there's three recipients of the donations the primary recipient um, is the foundation who supports the um, teachers and classrooms with mini grants uh, throughout the year the first one will be the high school athletics department a $250 donation the second one is Holman um, future farmers of America $200 donation and finally, the Holman Area Foundation with um, $5,453 donation. So if I can ask a uh, representative. Um, um, is Bob? This would be when we'd like Ruth Schultz to come up. And she's um, representing our Holman Area Foundation and present her to the check. I'm actually wearing two hats tonight, one for the Holman Area Historical Society and one for the Holman Area Foundation. And again, welcome to everybody. And as an alumni of Holman, this is fabulous. So thank you for all your support that you do for Holman. First, with the Holman Area Historical Society, I want to thank Dr. Mueller and the school district for the partnership. And if you've had a chance to read the visions, you've had a little bit of history with the school district of Holman and we are celebrating that four-year program that has us have this high school and we'll have that centennial class of 1916 being celebrated throughout the school year and it was with the parade with the visions it'll be some other things happening um, as you stop in at the high school there's a display case too so thank you for supporting that the foundation wants to also thank you we are part of that back to school celebration we were part of the homecoming parade, riding in the festival food cart. And if you ever get a chance, jump at that. That's really fun. And the pork feed, we had a table. And so thank you, because it was a way to reach out to the community to say thank you for what we do. 
The Holman Area Foundation is committed to the random acts of kindness once again for all the school administrators and those educational excellence awards that go to the teachers. Last year, we distributed $8,325 to 22 different teachers. And this included projects with Environmental Day, photography, young girls wellness, just to name a few. This year, we're committed again with over $8,000. So those applications were due October 1st, and then again February 1st for those educators, and we are there to support those needs in your classrooms. Finally, we are celebrating the Home and Area Foundation, and hopefully you received an invitation. It's a night to come and say thank you from the foundation. We don't want any money. We don't want any commitment. We just want you to come and celebrate with us the people who make a difference in the Home and Area. So that is October 22nd up at Drugan, starting at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock with a brief program, which will be featuring some of the grants that were distributed from last year. So thank you for this gift. And you matter, and we matter, and we thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Can, thank you can I say something? Sure. It's going to be brief, but Ruth is an incredible gift to this community. And what you give back to us means so much. I thank you so very much for what you do. You're a very special person. Just what I was going to say, Kate, so oh. thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's okay. So I think then moving on to National School Lunch Recognition Week, Dr. Mueller. This week we have, um, we're recognizing all of our great uh, nutrition services department and all the great work they do. Um, they Day in, day out, even in the summer, they're always looking at new ways, new recipes, and um, different things to provide our students in the lunchroom. But beyond that, they also this week have activities going on in, in the elementaries where they have dress up days and um, and the nutrition services staff has helped in being involved with that. And then we're fortunate to have uh, special servers, possibly some of you sitting out there have come and been servers in our lunch line. But today I know we had the police come over to Prairie View and serve, and we have the fire department coming to serve, and just a lot of community members and special guests, some of our school board members, um, coming to serve lunch to our students this week in celebration of our National School Lunch Recognition Week. So, thank you. Thank you, and I know Holman has been a leader in the school lunch program for many years, the number of participation, the percentage that we have there, and we were offering additional vegetables and fruits <coughs> way before that became the thing to do, so it's always been um, a nice thing to see that we take a leadership role. Um, so thank you um, to Mr. Gasper and his staff for all that they do. Um, then the next item is reports and discussion, and it's our opportunity to hear from this good-looking group over here, finally um, suited up and uniformed, the DECA presentation. So if you want to come over to the table over here. I understand these are your competition uniforms or blazers. Yeah. So they look very nice. <clears throat> it should be live, you can test it. Oh, Oop, okay. cool. there it is. I'm Bobby Anderholm, Vice President of Public Relations. I'm Whitley Chelsma, I'm Vice President of Socials. Fred Davis, Vice President of Web Design. Uh, Tyler Peterson, Vice President of Interactive Media. I'm Ashley Crompe, Vice President of Community Service. I'm Max Koss, Vice President of Communication. And I'm Ben Jones, Vice President of Vocational Understanding. And I'm Allison Butterfield, this year's Home and Decker President. And our Advisors this year are Scott Shriver, Heather Bresky, and Nicole Osgood. 
Home and DECA was established in 1974 and now has over 500 members. We are the largest DECA chapter in Wisconsin and the seventh largest chapter in the nation. The, we have marketing and business <coughs> concepts, advanced marketing, sports and entertainment marketing, and entrepreneurship classes offered. We also participate in many civic, social leadership, and vocational activities. DECA participates in multiple activities a month. Socials get students involved in DECA in a fun and exciting way while promoting home and DECA. In September, we started with one of our breakfast socials hosted in our school store. Last weekend, we went to Valley Fair. And Mall of America is our next event, which is also one of our most popular. And the New York trip, Brewers game, Bucks game, and Badger game is in our future events this year. Each year, we have our Holman DECA members compete in leadership development conferences. There's three levels of competition, districts, state, and nationals. Districts takes place January 10th at UW Stout. State takes place March 9th through the 12th in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And finally, nationals takes place from April 23rd through the 29th in Nashville, Tennessee. Last year, we were fortunate to have over 100 members, uh, competitors at districts, 47 at state, and 28 at nationals. Our competitors are judged on their role plays, written projects, and marketing assessments. Uh, Holman Decca runs a variety of social media pages, including Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All of these pages are used to interact with our members as well as other chapters from around the area. In order to get our chapter more involved with the community, we participate in several events throughout the year. We started this year with the back to school cleanup where we had members of our chapter come to touch up the front of the school to get ready for the beginning of the school year. We then, a couple weekends ago, participated in the Down Syndrome Walk, which was the fourth year we did this. Trick or Treat So Others Can Eat is on Halloween night where we go and collect canned, go canned food goods to help families in the area. The coat drive is something that we do, which started today and goes through November 1st. It's district-wide, and we collect gently used coats. Dancing with the Sports Stars is our biggest charity event, and that's where a local dance member uh, pairs up with a sports star in the high school, and they do a short number in front of an audience, and they all the proceeds to that go to a family in need. The model store is put on by our ENTRE class, and all the proceeds that they collect from selling presents during the holiday season go to a family. And then we also do the Senior Citizen Holiday Meal, which happens during the months of either January or December. And we make a breakfast meal for senior citizens. We play bingo, and we spend the morning socializing with senior citizens. Holman Decca has a variety of income sources. First of all, Holman Decca sells tickets at various football games in order to win tickets to a Packer game. Also, in the spring, in order to raise money for our national conference, we sell flower baskets. Also, this year we created and sold the homecoming t-shirts throughout the district, the high school, middle school, and elementary levels. Uh, we plan on selling Holman Viking blankets during the uh, basketball ga games this year. Also, th our entrepreneurship class sets up a model school store in which they sell holiday goods. Also, DECA puts on a number of the dances done at the high school, including this year's homecoming dance. And we receive a generous amount of donations from our business partnership, Ultra Federal C Credit Union. On behalf of Ultra Federal Credit, or excuse me, on behalf of Home and DECA, I would like to thank Ultra <coughs> Federal Credit Union because they are our partner. We are, excuse me. <laughs> You're doing just fine. <laughs> we have a partnership with them in a financial and educational aspect. With the financial aspect, they, um, they give us travel scholarships to students to compete at multiple levels. And they are our partner in the edu educational aspect because they provide classes about financial literacy. They also hire students. I personally work at Ultra Federal Credit Union as a marketing intern. <laughs> we would like to thank you for your time here tonight and also for your continuous support. At this time we'd like to take or we would like to take the time to hand out some of our newsletters for you. <coughs> oh, <there's a> <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you, mister. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't know, are there any questions by board members? Um, I just want to say that I have two daughters whose lives were changed by DECA and their advisors, and I'm thinking maybe you understand what I mean by that. I talked to most of you on my way in tonight about learning things from how to eat at a table to also how to give back to the community. Um, I think DECA has this really cool balance between both things, um, to be in business and still to be a supporter of people who need you. And everything you presented tonight is an example of that. So I'm really happy for all of you and all the other. You said there, we're the largest DECA in Holman, is that correct? In the state. In the state. Yeah, that's really cool. So <laughs> um, please, it, are your advisors here tonight? Can you wave so I know who you are? Yeah. Thank you so much because you do change the world. I think that's what DECA does, and um, I'm grateful for that. Okay. Any questions, board members? <clears throat> Seeing none, I would echo uh, Mrs. Mayor's comments and thank you for coming this evening. I know that you come and do a presentation with your store in, in November, I think sometime in November, and we always look forward. It's always positive for us to hear from the students firsthand. Um, it helps make what we do um, a little bit, some of the work that we do, just a little bit easier to see all the success that you have. So thank you so much for working hard and for your presentation this evening. And good luck through your competition this year as well. So thank you. Thank you. And then I think it, as they are leaving, and I think we're going to call the other group. I see the teachers from the high school, I think, are here. So if they want to come up and kind of line up very similar to what the students were, we'll just have you introduce yourself, where, what, what you're doing now in the district, and maybe where you came from, if you just graduated from college, or if you um, were teaching in another district where you came from. So. They're, they're fresh from conferences. Yes. They're just not stopping. They're going for an all-nighter of work, right? Exactly. <laughs> kind of used to that. No. <laughs> Hopefully not. All right. Well, I can start. I'm Patrick Swanson. I'm a math teacher. I teach algebra at the high school. Um, I'm from Rice Lake, Wisconsin originally, and I just graduated this last May from UW-La Crosse. I did my student teaching here, so I was lucky enough to get employed here as well. Great. Excellent. Hello, I am Maureen Willett, and I teach Language Arts 9 and Speech, and in the spring I will also do English 10 up at the high school, and this is my eighth year teaching, uh, but my last teaching experience was in Black River Falls. Good evening, my name is Pam Jepson, and I am in the Family Consumer Science Department. Um, this quarter I have a foods class and a... <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> a um, uh, that um, interior design class. Um, next quarter, I'll be teaching a creative foods class, foods two level, and then um, I will have another foods class and a uh, fashion merchandising class. And then last quarter, I will be teaching another foods class. I am a part-time employee here by my choice. And um, I'm enjoying it immensely. Um, prior to coming here, I had worked many, many years in Onalaska with that gal right there. <laughs> Hi there, I am Lorianne Jesse. I teach English up at the high school. I am originally from Florida and taught there for several years, and then we moved to Texas, and I taught there for several years, and now we are Wisconsinites. Good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Heather Franzini, and this is my first year in a school. Um, Prior to this, I'm a uh, guidance counselor. Prior to this, I was in the mental health field for the past 10 years um, as a counselor in the community. I'm Cassie Ewalt. I'm the other family consumer science teacher at the high school. Um, I'm teaching foods along with Pam and sewing this term. And the next term, we both have creative foods all, all term. Then we have some parenting and some more foods and advanced foods and some more foods. <laughs> so if you're hungry, stop in and see us. Um, last year I came from Central. Um, that was my first year, so this is my second, second year teaching, so I'm really excited to 
get this going. Hi, I'm Elena Matthews. I'm an education assistant. Um, I spend my mornings at the Academy on the Prairie, and then I head over to the high school and um, kind of am at the moment running the um, freshman lunch boost program, and then I go into special ed for the rest of my day. So it's been a lot of fun. I did subbing all last year, so I'm really glad to be in the district full time this year. Hi, I'm Jared Johnson. I teach uh, high school science. I came from Black River where I taught for three years, so this is my fourth year. And I'm originally from Minnesota and came over here for college and wanted to stay in the area. I'll step forward. I'm Ken Shelper. This is my first year teaching ever. I'm currently the high school geometry teacher and applied mathematics teacher. Um, I actually am doing this as a complete change in career. My degree actually was originally in music, so this is kind of a little <laughs> bit of a switch. Um, oh. Switching into the mathematics field, but I'm absolutely ecstatic to be in this school district. It's been great so far and can't wait to keep going. Uh, my name is Ryan Ziegler. Um, I taught in Arcadia for the last 15 years. Uh, I teach uh, automotive and electronics and robotics at uh, high school. Um, I didn't think after d doing this for 15 years that you could feel like a new teacher, but I do. It's a good <laughs> thing. Uh, you know, you just learn the kids, the students, the processes. So I've been enjoying it uh, and uh, just uh, hope to continue success. So. Well, and thank you. We are really, I think I got every, everybody right, or do we? Yep. Oh, there's yep. someone yep. in the. Sorry. Oh, you got him. So we are just really thrilled to have you here. And thank you for taking time out of yet another busy evening and coming over here and introducing yourself not only to the full school board, but to the community. We do broadcast our meetings. So um, not, thousands of people watch. But you know, <laughs> time to time, people will um, show, you know, watch and, and uh, check in on what's going on. But congratulations. We know that it's a very difficult process that we have. We only hire the best. And from the background you've shared with us, it shows us that we're not all about saving money and only hiring fresh grads out of college, that our commitment to having the best in the classroom of those that apply is really solid. And um, so it's nice to see a good mix of new teachers, new educators, and then very experienced <coughs> educators. It's what makes our district strong. So thank you, each and every one of you. And now you can go home for the day. So thank you so much for stopping in, though. After, oh, the after a picture. Oh, after a picture, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know. I know. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. okay. Oh, no, I think I should. I have to come closer. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for all you do. <laughs> so then moving on to the Writing Institute presentation, Wendy. Good evening, and tonight I have with me um, four of the teachers that went with us to the Summer Writing Institute this past year. And during the Summer Writing Institute, um, these four volunteers in district leadership roles joined us and had an intense week of learning. I have Sarah Wengerter. She is a fifth grade teacher at Viking Elementary School. She is an ER facilitator, and she is also on the ILA committee. Next, I have Sarah Davis. She is, oh, sorry, Sarah Craig. <laughs> and she is our ILA chair. Next, I have Laura Ruger. Laura Ruger is a first grade teacher at Evergreen and an ER facilitator. And Tracy Sommerfeld. She is on the ILA committee, and she is a kindergarten um, ER facilitator. And 
ER is early release and yeah. ILA just so integrated language arts. Thank you. <coughs> Follow back. For the past two summers, teachers from the school district of Pullman have been fortunate enough to attend the Summer Institute at Teachers College at Columbia University in New York City. Each year, about 8,000 people apply to attend the week-long institute. 1,200 of those people are accepted into the institute, and five of us from Pullman were lucky enough to attend this past summer and four the summer before. It's an amazing, incredible opportunity to learn about writing workshop and workshop models from the people who developed the model, studied it, implemented it, and refined it over 30, for over 30 years. We're excited this year to come back and to teach you about what we learned and also to teach our colleagues throughout the school district about what we learned about workshop. There are two categories of participants at the workshop. The first is a first year participant, somebody who has never attended um, an institute before. Those participants get to go to half day workshop that's a lecture format where they learn about the guiding principles and basic tenants of a workshop model. In the other half of their day, they get to go into small groups based on their levels of experience where they practice and apply what they learned in the other half of their day. If you are lucky enough to attend more than one year, <laughs> an advanced participant, in which you get to choose sessions that delve deeper into um, core principles from the workshop model. This year we had three of us who were considered advanced participants and went back for our second year. And our <coughs> sessions that we went to are on the next slide. They included things like working with small groups and, and teaching strategies, um, using mentor text to define different principles in writing, and then also um, how to make phonics and spelling and punctuation come alive in a workshop. <laughs> uh, a part of each day we were um, lucky enough to um, listen to some really great keynote speakers that are not only authors of um, writing and reading instruction, but also authors in Sarah Weeks, um, what her book, Soviet, which I'm currently reading with my fifth graders and we absolutely love it, um, is becoming a motion picture. So she added that and it, just, it was really great to see their love for reading and writing and just from an author's point of view to bring that back to our teachers and our students. My, my kids are absolutely in love with Sarah Weeks and want to write her and tell her to give her suggestions. <laughs> um, so what we had, we spent all day in class, which was amazing, um, and then we were assigned homework. So it was like kind of we were in college again, um, and uh, at each night we had our homework. We took what we learned that day, um, whether it was an Mine was um, informational writing. So I had to take one topic that I really liked and I did running and then write um, an informational piece. Or And it was really helpful, at least I know for me, and we've talked about it um, every day over dinner and when we were doing our homework, um, of just getting that, actually putting it into practice. So what I was able to do there, I've now brought back to my students and I share with my colleagues every PLC in my building and every chance that I get to at ER. So it's been a really great experience to take what we've learned and put it into practice and then share it with everyone. And then, so we had the morning, or yeah, mostly the morning, um, with either our large group, if you're a first year, and then um, the advanced people that have to go back to second year, because it's exciting to learn new things. Um, they, we had afternoon choice sessions. So those are just a few. Each day there were probably eight to two some, in between eight and probably 15. Some days it felt like there was a million. Um, and we would get together in the band group and figure out which ones, which session was best based on um, a form, a Google form that we sent out to the teachers in, in the elementary for what they really wanted to get, what we could get for them to help them learning with writing workshop. And with those responses that we got, we tried our best to um, choose that fit those needs and then what we also thought would expand on that. To, really get into it. And some of the afternoon sessions really help. They're like a snippet of what the advanced sessions get. So it was a nice like, oh, this is really cool. This would be great if I could spend a whole week doing it. What? Some people were lucky enough to do. <coughs> so I was one of the lucky ones that got to go two years in a row. Um, the first year we went and we came back and we um, shared things that we learned at our ER that are really releases. We also shared um, during two of the three staff development phase we had, we offered several different writing sessions that teachers could sign up for and pick what best fit their needs. 
these are some of the sessions that we offered last school year during those ER days and those professional um, 30 days. And then these are a few of the key things that we're going to offer this year. It's not a complete list yet. Uh, it's a start, but we haven't planned out every early release and every day so far this year. So over the past two years, we've been learning about and implementing layered workshop, and now this year we're moving into the journey of implementing reading workshop. And by implementing both writing and reading workshop, we're able to provide seamless instruction to our students. Um, for example, in writing, if we're learning about writing informational text, in reading we're also studying informational text. Um, so they're, they're able to make connections to what we're learning in both of the subjects. And then for the teacher's aspect, we're able to take what we've learned over the past two years as far as the structure of the workshop model, and now we're able to use that into implementing our reading workshop model because the format and the model is the same. Each day starts with a mini lesson and goes into independent practice, and then a share time at the end. So most importantly, why we're here is we want to thank continuously supporting us and giving us the opportunity to go not only funds but go back to further our knowledge that we can bring back and share with the teachers in the and I think all of us agree that this is by far the best professional development opportunity that we have ever gotten to experience. Um, so we just want to leave you with a little clip. It's one of our youngest writers in the district. She's a kindergartner and she is sharing what she one snippet, what she has learned in writing workshop in kindergarten. Sorry, the link wasn't working in the presentation. the last one. one. questions I do have a question um, first of all I'm, I'm just so excited that workshop is coming here I listened to Lucy Calkins when she was a grad student and just beginning her work but workshop is really different than conventional teaching of writing and reading so how's it going with the training of our staff um, because it's, it's a hard thing to embrace, really. We get lots of feedback over the past year about um, the training that we've been able to provide. Um, it's, it's a very, it is expensive to go to Teachers College, but it's also very expensive to have them come and provide a homegrown institute. <coughs> We're doing the very best that we can in training them. I've had multiple teachers say to us about the trainings that we provided at ER that not only are they a better teacher of writing, based on what we provided, but their students are stronger writers. Is, is early release something that everybody goes to, or is that a choice? No, everybody goes, and they have certain things to choose from? No, or, most, no early, they, most early releases were split up by grade level. So okay. I, I teach fourth grade, so all the fourth grade teachers in the district get together, and that's when we share, um, at that time, we share some of the things we've learned. And some of the um, professional learning days we've had, like November, Six when we have the day off of school, 
Um, that's in the past when we've offered different sessions for writing. So that's where they've had more choices. Um, early release has been more um, like we'll talk this month on, you know, on norming your writings, on uh, us norming our scoring so that it's similar across the district. Thank you. And I, I do think it's important for the public, for like Cheryl said, the thousands of people that watch <laughs> this program to know that when we send um, people off to a trip, and it, it's pricey, it definitely is, but it comes back and it changes how basically our kids are taught. And when I listen to you talk about workshop and then going into reader's workshop also, that's really state of the art. That's, um, those are lucky kids that go to Holman School District and the teachers that embrace this. So thank you. Wendy, thank you for finding this and all the teachers that go. I have to thank them for being incredible leaders. <laughs> Oh, yay. I would love to do that. <laughs> I do want to, I know that um, it takes a commitment by you and your family to, for you to be gone. And thank you for taking that time and dedicating it to the district. Um, really very much appreciated. So thank you for all that you do, not only in the summer, but every day in the classroom. It's much appreciated. Thank you. I had a quick question. Yes. That's Alina. okay. Um, I was just wondering, did you feel like with the new technology referendum, obviously we're needing to implement a lot more technology, and did you get a, some concrete examples or come up with ways that you could use technology with, you know, the writing workshops with students? Because, I mean, they're all, I think the students are really into technology, and sometimes those of us that aren't as into technology trying to teach writing, it have you come up with, can you give some examples of like engaging ways to use technology that you've heard about or other teachers are using or you're using? Um, so what I did last year um, is my, in fifth grade, they're really starting to get a handle on Google and yeah. all the wonderful things that Google does for you. Right. Um, so what they did is they would, as part of like their peer conferencing, sometimes, and they, they live for this, they would share it with anybody and everyone. So they would take their peer con whoever their peer conference was, and they would share their documents, and then part of that, they can comment to each other. What's a peer conference? Um, so it's where, instead of like me sitting down with every student, they have like a writing buddy. Oh, so okay. Someone that they work with, and they know their story, and they make comments on it based on the mini lesson, and using our checklist that they all um, use the checklist. Um, and the checklist is just what you need to have in your writing, what your fifth grade writing is expected to be. Um, okay. So then they use that, and they can comment on it, comment on their um, Google on their writing based on that so if we were able we haven't fully started that yet because it's just the beginning of the school year but they they live for it and that's okay. just one way that I used it so that then they can make those comments and then they can see it that's really cool I've got a kindergartner and he's starting to talk about the writing and he's got you know every I've got also a seventh or a second grader and they've always talked about their buddies their reading buddies their writing buddies that are a year or two ahead of them is that the but those are the buddies that you're no, talking about no, or are these so okay. Have, um, <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Lots of lost, different buddy types. Buddies. Yeah. Um, so the, with the reading, with workshop, there's writing buddies, so it's just kind of just like a writing partner within the classroom. Oh, okay. And those can be someone who's at your level, kind of like the same writing level, or okay. like a, um, someone who may be higher than you. It all depends on how it works out and like who gets along with who and what's the best partnership. Gotcha. Um, but the reading buddies where it's the grade level, that's just to like just read with each and talk about great reading and we sometimes match up with those so I know um, with my buddies my buddy classroom is Mrs. Lee and okay. she's, um, she's at K1 loop so sometimes when they're having a writing celebration we'll go and we'll read their writing which is really great for fifth graders because they get to see where they came from and actually last week uh, oh, that's crazy cool. brought her kindergartners in for a silent break to show off their writing that they did and my kids were like they loved it and that's awesome. I think I think a secondary gain too, though, that I noticed from that is that kids from di between the grades are kind of connecting better maybe than they had before. You know, not such separate silos that they're mentoring each other, and I really like that with the learning stuff that you're doing too. So, but thank you for going to the workshop or the, the college. Any other questions? I'm not sure if this enthusiasm came before, if you've always had it, or it came as a plus, but it's wonderful to see. So thank you, ladies. Much appreciated. Thanks.
then we have the reading math ESEA reports. So as, as they come up, I would like to welcome Amy Steckley. She is our district reading specialist. And also with her is Deb Sinclair. She is a Title I teacher at Sand Lake. And Brenda Geyer, who is our district math coach. All right, so I'm um, just going to kind of walk you through some of the data. Um, this is an annual report that is also required um, under some title funding, so we want to share uh, the work that we do over the course of each year. So the, the Title I vision is about how we partner with schools, staffs, and families to provide support to students in the area of reading and of mathematics to produ produce and promote academic success. Um, our mission is that we work with current research-based interventions. We have uh, open and honest communication with parents and um, classroom teachers because we do have interventionists who are working with these students who are struggling in the areas of reading and math. Um, we use ongoing assessments and multiple measures to help us understand student achievement and to guide our instruction. And then we really make sure that our Title I staff is providing a safe and nurturing environment so that these students who are um, coming outside of their classroom for a short amount of time each day really get an opportunity to feel like they're special and that they're, um, they're making some progress in their learning. Uh, part of also, you heard the teachers that were just here talk about the best practices. These teachers as well during early release get together as a group and they talk about what their best practices are. Um, they uh, engage in book studies and they watch videos so that they also remain on the cutting edge of uh, best practice to work with uh, struggling students. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Title I Reading and Math Program and the description about the services that we offer. Um, we, within Title I, it is a, an opportunity for children either um, that do not meet your, your local benchmarks, state or federal benchmarks, to get additional support. In Holman, we screen only the lowest 30% of our students so that we really are looking at who needs the support the most. We get that input from classroom teachers each spring. We ask them to create a composite list, who are the 30 most, the 30 percent of students that you would like us to look at. Um, and then we do some screening using multiple measures again so that we can then set up uh, small group settings. So most of the children are in groups of no more than four. We really shoot for a group of three to four students at a time so that we are being very intense and purposeful in the instruction when we are um, taking them out of their classrooms, which is not happening during the regular core instruction time. So we really stay clear of reading math and writing blocks. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the reading section since that's kind of my wheelhouse and then I have Brenda Geyer here who is going to be a, a new face for you here. Usually Doug Burge um, came to do this presentation so I'll talk a little bit about the elementary reading and math and then Deb if you have anything to add or you want to ask her questions you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, so within the reading um, section, we take students and using some multiple measures, take a look at how are those lowest 30% um, doing and who would we pick up um, to support throughout the course of the year and monitor their progress. Several assessments that we use um, for um, kindergarten, we do a hearing and recording sounds and words, which is a dictated sentence. So we ask them to write the words that they hear in that sentence. We're looking for certain um, spelling features within those words and sound blends and you know, vowel teams and things like that. Um, concepts about print is really about book handling skills, front of the back, front of the book, back of the back. Can you, um, do kids have one-to-one -one correspondence when they're printing or when they're pointing to words? Um, it's, it's, you know, there's caveats of how books work. And then the other one is a text level. So that is, um, we have a, um, over the course of each year, there are levels of progression of text complexity that include um, accuracy, fluency, and comprehension. So we take a look at all of those indicators to see how students understand what they are reading. Um, you'll notice there's two sets of data here for kindergarten, and that that is um, the Prairie View School does not receive any title funding, um, so we do provide some support for them as well. So when you see at the reading resource section, that would reflect 
uh, Prairie View schools because they are not a Title I or a targeted Title I school. So you can see that when you look at our combined data at the end of the year, how, how did students meet our end of the year benchmarks? Um, we had 90% with hearing and recording sounds and words, 52% for concepts of print and text levels at 71. And then the Prairie View data is there for you to take a look at as well with 90, 163. In grade one, we do the um, assessments there, include hearing and recording sounds and words, the text level, and the um, high frequency word list. So we move to a, a word list there. Combined data at the end of the year, meeting the benchmarks that we had established, 97%, um, 81%, and 92% in Evergreen, Sand Lake, and Viking. And then per review, we had 92, 42, and 75% of our students hit those targets for end of the year expectations. And in second grade, um, it, you'll notice there is no Prairie View data. The re reading resource teacher only served kindergarten and first grade. They're not second grade students. So you can see how the data looks there, about 71 and 77% on those assessments. Um, our middle school also does have a support structure for Title I as well. The assessments there are just a little bit different. We use the, the um, map, the NWEA map. Um, we use the, the, um, the similar kit that we use for the running records, the text level, the benchmark assessment system, and the summative assessments that the classroom teachers are giving, and then also Ames Web Fluency. What's really exciting, I think, in this data to point out is how well the students did on our um, benchmark assessments. So the um, middle school Title I teacher, Kendra Bringy, does a fantastic job of um, really taking students who may be coming in after several years of, of struggling and closing that achievement gap for many of those middle school students. So I'm going to turn it over to Brenda, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about the math, and then towards the end of the report, we'll talk about students that are dismissed, and then if you have questions about any of the data sets, you can throw them one way or the other. Good evening. So as Amy said, I'm here to kind of share about math. So um, the first slide that's up is our kindergarten. It kind of shows the assessments that we do. Um, really the focus in the early grades with early numeracy is looking at one-to-one -one correspondence. So are students able to count counters? If I pull one, I recognize that one-to-one. -one. This is one, two, three, and so on, compared to sometimes our early learners, well, one, two, three, four, five, um, when they're looking at just two counters, for example. So counting a pile of 32, that's really looking at 32 counters, um, and up to, by the end of the year, they should be able to count up to 32. Um, making a quantity of 18, kindergarten students are expected to actually create, given a pile of counters, they pull out 18 and make that 18, um, knowing one more to 21. So um, when students are giving a, given a number, they're able to determine what's one more than that. And then likewise, the knowing one less from 12. And then our last assessment for kindergarten is called the hiding assessment. Um, and it's really looking at combinations of five. So if I give you two counters, um, I ask the students, how many do I have hiding? They're able to recognize that there's three hidden. So um, up to five, really, for our kindergarten. And then you can see the combined data scores there on the side um, of how, how students did at the end of the year for the benchmark listed by percentage. Um, for grade one, um, it's, so if we look at hiding assessment combinations of five, that would be the same as what we do with our kindergarten learners. Um, we, it also goes a step further where we look at combinations up to 10. So as we move up in grade levels, um, students are expected to have more composing and decomposing of numbers up to a higher number. Um, changing numbers to 10 is really, it's kind of that idea of more and less, but it's more than just one more and one less. Um, so if I have six, can you change this number to make it eight? Then students would add two counters, for example, on the assessment to show that they can do that. Um, and then our last two are really related to <clears throat> making a 10. The strategy of making a 10 is a, um, a, a really helpful strategy when we look at addition and subtraction, um, and anchoring to 10 is a for that early numeracy. And then likewise, on the, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see the combined data. Um, the percentages listed for the end of the year benchmarks. Um, and then our last grade level, grade two, um, we again have hiding assessment combinations of 10. 
And then the 10 frames <coughs> and facing 10, again, we're just looking at that really that idea of anchoring to 10, and it gets a step more developed as we enter into grade two. So then on the, on the end, um, the combined data, again, 72% for hiding assessment, 46% um, for 10 frames, and I think it's 62% for, <laughs> um, for the last one. Um, and then our last slide is our middle school title. Um, so as Amy mentioned, that they use math with the reading. Um, it's similar for math. And um, that overall target score then, the number or the percent that met, the 16% and then the um, percent that did not meet. Um, it, there, kind of a note there, on average students made a growth of four points on the math assessment. And um, some of the students were able to be dismissed in the winter because they reached the bench as Amy mentioned before too, the ongoing discussions and collaboration on what are some ways we can help our students or strategies and things we can change or improve within our classroom. Um, to help our students improve their All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how students are dismissed from Title I support. Um, we were over the course of the year able to, uh, for reading, dismiss a total of 69 students. So we were able to close the achievement gap and send them back into their classrooms with, uh, without that additional support uh, from the Title I staff. And in math, we were able to send 21 students back into the classroom. And then we, of course, um, whenever we dismiss students, we always go back and take a look at who can we bring in. So we look at the next group of students that would need that additional support. So exciting to see the numbers that we do have, like, but again, always looking for the, um, for the best practices and uh, have open conversations with classroom teachers, the Title I teachers for students who are making um, not the expected gains that we're hoping for. Um, those students are going through and we're having continued conversations with classroom teachers, uh, school psychologists, and um, you know they'll meet with Wendy or they'll meet with myself or we will, Brenda will come and help uh, those teachers out too for some of those kids who are still kind of puzzles for us about how we help close some of those learning gaps for students. So before she switches, it does look like the number of students dismissed for reading is significantly more. And the reason for that is there's more title support for reading than there is for math, so. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? All right. Um, also included in your board report was a rather lengthy and exhaustive. I mean, there's a lot of information in there about um, what Title I does, more on our mission and our vision. Um, the other thing that's really interesting in there that if you like to do some like bedtime reading, we did take some time. I know, like, oh, let me read more reports. Uh, there is some fantastic information. Our teachers were very thoughtful about those unmet targets and how what we're going to do differently. So they spent a lot of time really planning about what they're doing this year and how we're going to continue to move forward to meet some of those needs that we just were um, looking at how we can continue to support those struggling students in our in our title one programs hey thank you so very much for the information I know even though it is a required report it's one that the district the board is really interested in hearing that um, student progress I think especially we understand in the lower levels it's so important it's going to set the foundation for all their learning so right the thank the you. title one program really is about that early intervention and prevention and how can we close uh, those achievement gaps and when especially when you're looking at those students in the middle school it doesn't look like they're um, you know they're, they're working with a smaller number of students too so when you look at some of those numbers and um, you just have to take that into consideration that we've got four elementaries but there's just one small middle you know the middle school students are a smaller section of the population but they're doing a lot of really great things at the middle school as well so thank you for your time tonight thank you very much for your information and thanks for all that you do for our students much appreciated so okay then moving on to consent agenda we have four items on the consent agenda. I'm, is there any item that you would like to have considered separately? Seeing none, then I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. moved. I have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda um, as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. And that includes the bid on the um, 
Chromebook, so that's very good news. They can move forward with that. Then board meeting or board member reports and discussion. If you have any comments related to committee report or committee meetings you've attended, um, I will call on you in the order of roll call. So, Kate Mayer. Um, no, I don't. Okay, Lisa Collins. No, I don't have anything to add. Tim Menninger. Uh, just a couple of quick comments tonight. Absolutely wonderful to see all the new staff here. Um, always an exciting meeting to to just welcome them and uh, uh, wish all of them, including the, the, the entire staff, a, a great school year. I know we're into it, but also thank them for their time. And, and for those that have been regular watchers of these meetings, also love when the students come out. Great to see the DECA group. They're always very impressive. Great representatives of Holman. And certainly uh, great to see those at the meeting here as well. So uh, always great when the folks come out to our meeting and very appreciative of that. Uh, we did have buildings and grounds committee meeting this evening, uh, but for any comments on that, I will defer to the committee chair, so. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dunlap, well there. <laughs> <laughs> Way to put me on the spot, yeah. <laughs> Trying to be brief tonight. Yeah, see, we did have a meeting tonight and it was went well. Um, I just had one comment, and that is it seems like the teachers that we get in every year are getting younger and younger. <laughs> Because you're getting older and older. Oh, thank you. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, I'd just like to welcome all them on board, and I hope they, they stick with us, and I'm sure they're going to do a good job, and that's all I have. Hey. Um, Mr. Young. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the DECA program for coming out and giving a good presentation. Also, uh, a group that's just forming is the Robotics Club, so I really give them props for trying to start a new club. And I believe they had a chicken dinner tonight, so that's something to get that club started. Um, I also like to acknowledge all the new teachers, and I wish them luck, especially the high school ones, because those would be the most like involved with me. And that's about it. Okay, thank you very much. Can I ask Jeff, who's like the advisor of the new robotics club? Who's getting that up and going as a staff member? I you know? have no idea, but right. I believe it was the shop teacher that's a new teacher this year. That You're was not just in. Do you know No, I'm not is? in it. No. Jay. Jay. We'll get the name to you. Okay. Okay. I did have one last comment, though. I wanted to, I didn't get a chance to, but wanted to ask the new staff. Um, one of the things that we're always talking about is um, recruitment and retention at the district. And I was just curious, you know, with new people coming here, you know, beyond some of the obvious reasons, what are some of the reasons people come to Holman? I don't know if we've asked new staff, you know, about that. What, what brings you here? What's a draw? What have you heard about Holman? Because people do come here. You know, for a reason, and either they're comparing something from a, a you know a previous experience, or you know they're coming to the area for another reason. But there's got to be some positive things. It'd be interesting to hear from the new staff that are coming through the door, mm -hmm. so that we can find out, you know, about that. Anything else, Lisa? I know. Okay. Oh, I got. Uh, yeah. I know the teacher's name from the our tech student behind the Did camera. Did you look it up on Sunday? No, it's uh, Miss Rosendale. She is the advisor. Okay, great. Say that again. Miss Rosendale. Thank you. Well, and then I just have a couple of things. One is related, one, well, I'm trying to figure out which mic I'm using tonight. One is related to the committee for the new compensation model. We had the organizational meeting of that group, um, laid some groundwork and continue to study that. Hopefully we will be coming to the board um, and the personnel committee and those groups um, with some recommendations in the next few months, but it was a good initial meeting. We're trying to trace the framework or the foundation of what is an educator in the school district, what are the expectations of an educator in the school district, and trying to separate those from some of all the extra things they do. The example was that we know across the district that many of our, co of our um, educators will mentor their colleagues in the classroom if they're in a fourth grade group or a first grade group or whatever, they mentor. But then we also provide additional compensation for people who do it um, maybe more what it, formally kind of thing. And so what's the difference between that because we've got those people that are doing it without that additional compensation and people who do it 
you know, with the additional compensation. And so we're trying to get an idea and set a foundation of what are the expectations of our educators. Is, is it just to deliver curriculum in the classroom? And we know that that's not the case. So that committee will meet once a month, and it's got a good mix of experienced and newer um, educators in the district. So um, you may not be aware, but not every teacher has to get credits now to maintain their license. If they do a, through the DPI, if they do a PDP, um, there may be things in addition or in, um, instead of getting college credits. And I think we are all very familiar with the old model and the old formula. So um, things are changing. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention, and I know Dr. Mueller and I have talked about this, but there was some, a little bit of media that um, reported on the school choice issue. And um, while it may seem to be very easy when you take the numbers and say these many students have chosen to leave the district and go to the other, to another school district, then when we dig further and do some of that surveys, which we do every year, in part because the board has been asking for that information. But so many of those 4K students come back to our district after, the, after they've done the 4K, and that's just a matter of convenience of where their daycare is. If it's the Y North daycare, then they receive that 4K curriculum um, through on Alaska as a school choice kind of thing. Well, they come back to Holman and start doing kindergarten and up, then um, that doesn't always get, I think, reported because it is not just a simple look at the numbers kind of thing. We also know from survey results that people do it as a matter of convenience. And I'd like to point out the area in Onalaska by Menards. Onalaska School District, right? Nope. The fact is that a good chunk of that is the Holman School District. And I've had home buyers tell me they bought their house thinking they were in the Onalaska School District. Um, but the reality is that it is Holman. And so because their neighborhood kids are all going to Onalaska, so when you have a neighborhood of kids going to Onalaska, they all kind of follow suit. And you know, we do have to look at things. I would say La Crosse, we can't say the same thing for La Crosse. And we had, I think, a, a stat was that 50 students from Holman applied for one of the charter schools in La Crosse, and they only could take three. Mm -hmm. 50 of our students applied to go to that charter oh, school, so and maybe we need to start looking at some of those opportunities and meeting the needs of our students. Of course, we've always been a traditional, um, deliverer of curriculum and education, so we'd have to have those kind of conversations to see. But it's just something for us to think about as the landscape changes. Maybe we look at, as Tim will always say, that year-round component. I think about the students here. I think about the summer school report that we had and um, last meeting, and maybe we do need to start looking at some of those. And um, Monday, last week, Monday, as we met as a board and we talked about our operations, I think we also got to know our new district administrator. And so I, I suspect she's going to bring some ideas to us as um, a board and as a district and to keep an open mind as we start pursuing some of those things. But I just, I think it was the discussion of the school choice coverage that got me thinking about all of that. And Yet it is on us to be more creative and to try to capture some of those students who may have chosen another school district for academic purposes and what are we missing out on. So I really appreciate your comments. Well, thank you. And nudging um, our brain pans. We do oh, need to think about those things. You explain things. Some are just like black and white, but some are like think about those. And I appreciate that, Cheryl. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Well, I knew it was going to be a short meeting, so we'll keep going then. Uh, we just have a couple meetings coming up then. Just the board meeting schedule. October 21st is the WASB meeting in Cochran Fountain City. We've got a board meeting on the 26th and the 9th of November. Can you believe it? It's almost November. Um, anything else to think about this evening? Any board reflections? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I would so move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nays. Motion carries. <laughs>